All right, time for a little friendly fire. But instead of Shamika Michelle, today we're going to do it with Royce White, Whitlock and Royce, friendly fire. Royce, uh, welcome. Uh, they have uh, mugshotted, arrested, and charged our boy in Atlanta, uh, former President Donald Trump. They're doing victory laps on MSNBC. And Roy, so I want to start with showing you a video of uh, Joy Reid uh, taking a dump on former President Trump, and then we'll react to that. You know, I can tell you for me, it is, you know, when I moved back to New York, um, one of the mugshots that, that, that sit with me, I mean, I still remember that he made five teenagers yeah. my age yeah. take a mugshot. Yeah. That he wanted them not just take a mugshot, he wanted them dead. Say what that case was. And this was the Central Park Five case, the exonerated five, you know, and, and they were my age. Yeah. So as a teenager living in New York, I, I've said it before, this is the reason I never watched The Apprentice. Yeah. I despised Donald Trump yeah. because he, to me, signified the rich white guy in Manhattan that absolutely hated and despised me, yeah. that hated and despised my cousins, my friends, everyone we knew, that, that, that called us wilding yeah. just because we were in the park that said we can't be free to walk around in the street, that said when Patrick Dorismond got killed by an off-duty police officer, he's no choir boy. And he was literal. I mean, was no altar boy. He was literally an altar boy. Giuliani said that. And so people like Giuliani and people like Trump persecuted black and brown people in New York. It's what they did for fun. It's what they did for pleasure. They enjoyed it. They enjoyed lording over people who had nothing, who had no million dollar lawyers, who couldn't change lawyers at the drop of a hat and get a different hip hop lawyer the next day when they were tired of one, who couldn't go out and make their case on, you know, Fox or on Newsmax, who had nothing and who Donald Trump lorded his everything over and still people who looked like them put him in rap songs. It was an indignity to me that something I loved, a culture I loved, love would lionize that. And so to me, this is justice. The fact that Manhattan didn't give him a mugshot, I thought was offensive. I thought that the Fed said, we already know what he looks like. He was the president of the United States. Okay, offensive. Everyone else had to take him. This case, and I think Fonnie Willis is a hero. She is a national hero because she, more than any prosecutor in this country, and I respect Jack Smith and I respect all the prosecutors that are doing this, she's the only one who said these wealthy, powerful, privileged men and women are just American citizens. And when they break the law, they will take that picture. Royce, she's sickening. She's stupid. She's sickening. She's a puppet. She's controlled. She doesn't believe. 90% of what she just said, she knows it's factually inaccurate. She's acting as if Donald Trump was a district attorney and not a businessman who took out an ad during that Central Park incident. He, he didn't do the things she's talking about. Did he have perhaps the wrong opinion on the Central Park Five? Yes, but all this other stuff she's added on to it and all this blaming of Donald Trump and all this revenge, again, it's not about the legitimacy of the charges against Donald Trump. It's some lust for revenge, and he's this evil person. It, it's, it's just, quite honestly, it's just bigoted and wrong. Joy Ann Reed is a liberal white woman, and liberal white women only like black men if we'll be the symbol of their resentful vendetta against white men particularly powerful white men, but they'll settle for any white men they can get. And if they can't get white men, then they'll settle for black men, preferably heterosexual black men. So Joy Ann Reed is my enemy. That's just the reality. That's what we're getting down to now. The lines have been drawn. They like their identity Marxist politics. They like their men soft. They like their men to, to cower under, under feminist politics. They like their, their men uh, uh, weak like the men that were sitting up there on that panel, uh, that sit on the panel across all the mainstream media news outlets, like Morning Joe, who's another another uh, another self-righteous cuck. Um, I just want to know where she got that white woman's hair piece. I want to know where you go. I want to know where you go. I want to know where you go to get a well-manicured white woman's hair piece. That short. So I know, because I cuss. I don't know. 
Let me tell you, and I'll tell you why I ask. I, I, I don't say it just to be joking. All of the women in my family came up in the hair business. <clears throat> my mom was an esthetician. She worked at a big salon, so I, I, I grew up there. My aunt owned, owned her own business in the community for 30 years. So I watched her do hair. I swept up hair. I shampooed women at the at the bowl when I was a young kid. I answered phones. I spent a lot of time at the at the hair salon and at the barbershop that was connected. Um, there are no wigs that look like that. You got to go find a white woman's wig and you got to trim it down to be that short. I want to know where and why they feel it's appropriate for a black woman to talk about pro black issues and the the ever-present threat of white supremacy while she tries her hardest to look like a white woman. Right, I go a whole different direction on the hair. A completely different, because one, I'm right, it's what caught my attention, but I don't see that as a white woman's wig. I, I see that as like, is she trying to mimic Trump's hair? Did she put on a hair piece to mimic Trump? That's what it looks like. It looks like someone gave her a bad Trump wig and placed it on top of her head. I'm just trying to, does she have friends? Does her husband care about her? Who is allowing her to go on TV with this horrible headpiece? Any man that would walk around with that, with that hairpiece would get ridiculed everywhere. She's wearing yeah. it on national TV with a bunch of stylists sitting around looking like, girl, you look good. She looks no, insane. Yeah, we, yeah we, we say it to be, you know, we say it jokingly and, and you got to say it in humor. To I'm not joking. Crying. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but it, it's it's funny, but at the same time, it's scary. You know, if I had if I had a wig, uh, if I if I was walking around with a wig of Howard Cosell's hair, everybody would think that I was absolutely crazy. Um, and, and, you know, these are just the little the little nuances of culture that that show how absent-minded the average person has become, especially that votes Democrat or tunes into the liberal establishment. I mean, wear your natural hair. If you're all about black folks and the melanin and the and the, and the pan-African neophyte movement, then wear your natural hair, like Muhammad Ali said, you know, back in the day. Uh, how my hair is says something about me. You see me, I can't wear my, I'm bald. That's just what it is. But I would never be caught dead with a Howard Cosell toupee. On a serious note, we'll end here on a serious note. If you're serious about establishing a criminal justice system that is fair and is fair to poor people, like Joy Reid and Black Lives Matter all say they care about that, then they should understand that if you throw out the rule books and fairness for someone like Donald Trump, who would ever have remorse for throwing out the rule book and fairness for poor black men. So, so again, if they really stood for what they say they stand for, they would put aside their political differences with Donald Trump and, and argue for a fair criminal justice system that had some semblance of respect for, respect for law, respect for authority, and a level of fairness, but justice is supposed to be blind, not politically partisan. I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know, at the at the deepest level, the divide between Democrat and Republican politics is one very simple thing: the expansion of the federal government versus the non-expansion of the federal government. There's one party that always votes to infinitely expand the federal government, which bastardizes citizenship, right? There's one party, and even more accurately, there's one movement within one party that's fighting to restore the value of citizenship, which is what civic duty and, and civil participation is really all about, but protecting the basic freedoms uh, and, and, and values even more so uh, uh, of citizenship, of your citizenship, of being born into this country. And, and together, those things like freedom, like justice, like uh, uh, security, um, all of those things make up the value of your citizenship. There's one party that looks to devalue your citizenship ad nauseum and it's the democrat party it's clear and she knows it and she knows what the devalue she knows what devalue citizenship they all know it rachel maddow knows it don lemon knows it. all of them know what devaluing citizenship means for everybody much less black people 
they, they're so arrogant. They're so arrogant in their elitism. They think that black people don't understand the value of their citizenship, which we've been intentionally taught not to by them. So when she goes out of her way to create this whole narrative about the Central Park Five and how Donald Trump is is sim symbolic of this racism of yesteryear because of the Central Park Five, the greatest racism and the greatest bigotry that still exists is that the Democrat political elites think that black people don't understand the value of their citizenship. Royce, uh, thank you so much. Hopefully uh, we won't be talking about racial Maddow uh, again very soon until until she gets a new toupee. Thank you, Royce. Thanks for playing some friendly fire with me. We'll see you next time. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.